to Banker Bell's Yarning. Uh, today is Fiber Friday. Uh, normally I would show you guys a new yarn store, um, but because of the time of year it is and because uh, we're starting our initiative here, I'm actually going to talk to you about uh, different charity programs that really need help from knitters and crocheters. Uh, so this is just a few that are out there, right? And I've put links in the description. Uh, I certainly not by any means all of them. I've tried to hit uh, ones that are throughout the world um, just so that everybody gets a, a, an idea of what they can do in order to help. Because I know with my knitting and crocheting, the projects build up and then I don't know what to do with them all and everybody's sick and tired of me giving them crap. And Anyways, so here are some options for you guys uh, to do with your knitted and crochet items. Um, so there's always fiddle mats and twiddle muffs. So these are uh, sensory, sensory stimulation items. So they have uh, things on them that you can play with. Uh, so buttons, curly cues, ribbons, that kind of stuff. Um, and you can make them either as a muff or a mat. And they are given to uh, seniors who have dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, they're also given to patients who have ADHD um, and uh, are on the autism spectrum and require sensory uh, stimulation uh, or sensory play in order to calm down. So there's one. Another seniors project is uh, donating hats, mitts, lapgans, and scarves to senior homes, especially uh, state or province one ones, because um, these people don't necessarily have families. Uh, so they they're always they're always happy to receive stuff like that. Uh, there's Knit for Peace, right, which uh, grew out of projects that were developed for needs in Rwanda and India. Uh, they're knit for street children and orphans. So this is centered in the UK uh, and it continues to provide items uh, in items for those in need of refugee situations. I can't even read my own writing. That's really bad. Uh, so there is that. Again, links are in the in the description. <coughs> me, there's a mother bear project which provides comfort and hope for children affected by HIV and AIDS in emerging nations. So these are in third world countries. And what it does is it gives a gift of love in the form of a hand knit or crocheted teddy bear. So you knit or crochet a teddy bear, you send it off to um, the Mother Bear Project and they give it to uh, children that are affected by AIDS. So not necessarily ones that have AIDS, but ones that are affected by it. So their parents or their siblings have AIDS or they're an orphan because of AIDS. Uh, the Snuggles Project, which is a multi-benefit project that provides blankets uh, to shelter animals and in which encourages frightened and difficult to handle animals to adopt a sense of calm and comfort. It also gives shelters a more comfortable and homely look and feel. So that's always a great one. Um, that one actually goes hand in hand with the Black Dog Project, or sorry, the Black Dog Club, um, which was actually started uh, in Winnipeg. So any shelter will be more than happy to take hand knit and hand crocheted items, uh, blankets, toys, uh, small things that are, are brightly colored so that when they take the photos of the, of the animals, they really stand out and they look, you know, like they belong in a home. Uh, so a cure for black dog syndrome is another, uh, another shelter project. It was actually started in Winnipeg at the Winnipeg Humane Society. Um, and they actually found that uh, Black or dark colored dogs and cats are frequently the last to be adopted and the first to be first to be euthanized. Now there's plenty of different theories as to why this happens, but it's it's a fact that they they happen. All right, people generally prefer animals with white, cream, brown, or speckled coats. Um, so the Black Dog Club uh, gives special benefits to those who adopt dark colored animals. So once you adopt a dark colored animal from the Winnipeg Humane Society, you automatically become a member. Um, if you, as long as the, the animal is 50, at least 50% black. So whether it's black dotted or it's half black or whatever, like my, my little old man would qualify because he's a tuxedo, uh, cat. And so he has white coloring, but he's more or less black. Um, and owners who already have animals that meet this criteria can become a member. And what it gets you is it gets you discounts on everything that the, uh, that the Humane Society sells in their store. Uh, so they sell everything in there. They sell um, crates, they sell collars, they sell leashes, they sell uh, duty bags, they sell food, dishes, you name it, they've got it. All right? it's, a, it's one of the ways that they raise money for, um, for the shelter itself uh, in order to provide medical attention for the animals that need it, as well as to keep providing a place for them to go. 
So, uh, da -da -da, bright colored collars, bandanas, colorful toys, blankets, and animal clothes are all great to donate. Um, and they're a great way to attract people's attention, and encourage adoption. So, you want to donate to animals? Donate to animals, right? They, they will get used. They definitely will get used. Um, I would definitely suggest using um, either acrylic or cotton. Don't get into your expensive wools and, and, and your fancy yarns uh, because they are going to be seen by, by dogs and cats. Uh, same thing when you, you knit or crochet for, chair, uh, for children. Stay away from the, the wools and the mohairs and the, the alpacas and the, the angoras. Stay away from all of that stuff. Um, stick with your, with your acrylics and your cottons. Um, even go into bamboo if you want, that's fine. Uh, but try and stay away from, from the, the, the more fancy stuff. Not that it won't be appreciated, it's definitely not the case. Right? It's more a matter of durability. Your acrylics and your cottons are going to stand up a lot more to multiple washes, uh, to wear and tear, uh, and to the life of an animal or a child. It, it just, unless the charity specifically states what kind of wool you are supposed to use, go with an acrylic or a cotton. Plain and simple. All right? And if you feel the need to let them know, you can add a little tag or a note to your item saying 100% wool, or uh, sorry, 100% acrylic, or 100% cotton, or a acrylic cotton blend. That works, but try and stick with your with those when you're doing charity uh, knits and crochets, unless of course the charity says otherwise. Uh, so the Hat Not Hate, which is a Lion Brand pr uh, program that brings awareness and uh, when brings awareness to and helps try to eradicate bullying. So it's what you do is you make, wear, and post handmade blue hats, right? Any blue hats. Uh, uh, with the hashtag hat not hate on your social media so that's a, a lion brand uh, initiative I think it's great I mean bullying sucks I spent the better part of my years growing up being terribly bullied and my daughter sees the same thing and I know there are people out there that are in the same situation it's great um, it, it's a matter of standing together for against this rather than being an individual because uh, one person can make a difference by encouraging others to make a difference. So if you wear a blue hat or you send your kid to school with a blue hat and people ask about the blue hat, your kid or you can tell them about the blue hat program. Or you can make blue hats for your kid's whole class, right? Or wear them at work. Just It's an awareness. It's a, a call to the cause, right? It's the same as the pink shirt program or the orange shirt program. They're and the green shirt program, <laughs> they're all, call, they're all caused, calls to the cause. It's to drive awareness right, and get it in people's heads and knowing that this is a problem and that we need to do something about it. Uh, there's the Binky Patrol. I just love the name of that one. It's, it's fantastic. So it uh, makes and distributes blankets and children, uh, newborn to 18, who are in need, so are, that are hospitalized in falter, foster care or in emergency situations. So it's kind of like, like what the Red Cross does, sort of, kind of. But it's its own individual charity, and it, it's a nonprofit. Uh, Knots of Love, uh, which provides hats, blanket, hats and blankets to people going through chemo. So that's everybody from children's to, children to, to teens to adults, seniors, vets, whoever's going through charity. Knots of Love is there for them. Uh, little Hats, Big Hugs, which is a knit and crochet baby hat uh, for infants program in February. Uh, and it celebrates American Heart Association and to raise awareness of congenital heart disease. So this is actually started in Chicago in 2014 with 300 uh, red hats. So all the kids born in February at the uh, in, in Chicago General Hospital in 2014 received a, a red hat. All of them. Now there are hundreds of thousands of children in 40 states that receive a red hat in February. And again, it's a call to awareness. It's a call to a cause, okay? Red hats for congenital heart disease for babies. Uh, Project Linus, I know a lot of you probably know about Project Linus. Um, so what this is, for those that don't know, is it provides homemade uh, blankets to children in need. Uh, it started in Denver. Uh, with Karen Locus, who decided to provide security blankets to Denver's Rocky Mountain Children's Cancer Center after reading an article entitled The Joy to the World in Parade Magazine. So this particular article featured a small child uh, named Laura, adorable kid, oh my god she's so cute, uh, she's three years old and she had leukemia. Uh, I believe it was 90% of her uh, 
bone marrow was affected by this leukemia. Uh, and this three-year-old, being three, didn't understand cancer, didn't know what it was really to speak of. She just knew that this was her life and this is what she had to do. Um, but she dragged this blanket with her to every appointment, to every chemo section, to every radiation, to everywhere this blanket went. Um, and it, it provided comfort for her. Right, so Project Linus provides blankets to children in hospitals that need that security blanket, that need that comfort level. Uh, Warm Up America, which is actually supported by the Kraft Yarn Council in America, and that provides Afghans for those in need of warmth and comfort in difficult times. Volunteers can knit or crochet seven by nine squares, that's seven by nine inches, uh, that are then joined together by, by you or by volunteers according to the specs on their website. Um, and they are, uh, are given to those in need. Uh, Afghans for Afghans. So this one's actually a really great project. It's, um, it's a break off from uh, the Red Cross knitting tradition. Uh, so in World War I and World War II, uh, the Red Cross got volunteers to knit and crochet um, hats, socks, scarves, mitts, vests, Afghans for soldiers and refugees. And they still do it, all right? They still do it today. You can still donate um, handmade items to the Red Cross directly, and they will distribute it according to need, all right? Uh, Afghans for Afghans is a, uh, a very specific program that provides uh, Afghan socks, slippers, sweaters, vests, hats, and mitts to soldiers and refugees in, in Afghanistan. So if you go through the Red Cross knitting traditions, right, it's on... It's, it's on the website there, the Afghans for Afghans, um, because it is a, a subsidiary of the Red Cross. Uh, you can actually find all of the, uh, the Red Cross knitting traditions um, to off branches. So that's another really great one. Uh, we did Black Dog Syndrome. We did the Binky Patrol. I think that's it for once. Yeah. So... What are we doing this year? So my daughters and I are doing the Red Scarf Project. So for those of you that don't know, the Red Scarf, Scarf Project, the Red Scarf Project uh, started in London, Ontario in 2012 as an initiative for public awareness, uh, sorry, an interactive public awareness art installation uh, that also gives back to the community. So it's for AIDS Awareness Week, which is November 24th to December 1st. Uh, and red scarves are either knitted or crocheted and then tied around lampposts, trees, and signposts in areas of need, uh, and they represent the red ribbon of AIDS awareness. The scarves are free to take and come with a tag that explains why they're there and encourages the reader to take one. So whether you need it or not, you're encouraged to take it, but they are put up in areas of need. So where there's a lot, uh, there's a high volume of homelessness, generally speaking, or low income, where um, warmth is a wish rather than a A wish rather than a comfort or an expectation because unfortunately not everybody can uh, can have warmth all year round um, it's every year here in Ottawa uh, our our youth go out and uh, they tie donated jackets like they actually dress lamp posts and sign posts with winter jackets uh, hats and scarves um, and this is a, an offshoot of that program or I, I'm I want to run it as an offshoot of the program um, downtown. So they, each of the articles of clothing come with a tag and says, you know, if you're, if you're cold, please take me and put me on. Right? So it's there for anybody that needs it um, without uh, stigmatism, without um, shame. Because unfortunately, a lot of people who are in these situations feel a lot of shame. Um, I don't think that they should. There, there is no shame in needing help ever right and I am definitely uh, one who can say that right I know that shame is not is not your fault and it's not something you should feel for something that you can't control so take a look at those charities see how you can make a difference right even if it's as simple as bringing a skein of yarn to somebody to make knitted knockers um, oh knit knockers I didn't talk about knitted knockers Oh my god, okay, so this is actually a huge one for me, um, simply because it runs in my family. Uh, Knitted Knockers is a, uh, a program that provides free prosthetic breasts to women who have had mastectomies. 
So they're better than the silicone ones because they're soft and pliable. Um, and the, the, the link is in the, is, is in the description there. So um, there are, on the website, there's patterns for knitted and crocheted pa uh, knockers. Uh, and it's literally giving boobs to women right, that are knitted or crocheted, and then they're filled with a fiber fill. Um, they have everyday wear ones, they have athletic ones, they have swimming ones, right, and they do have the look of natural breasts. But they're more comfortable to wear because they're soft, and you can wear them sooner after a mastectomy than you can a, a silicone or a vinyl prosthetic. So that's always fantastic, and I can tell you that the vinyl prosthetics are not comfortable. Um, my cousin had... Uh, had breast cancer she actually passed from it and uh yeah there's so many times where she's just flinging her boob on the table because she just can't wear it anymore uh, i went to my other cousin's wedding actually her brother's wedding and she did exactly that she was out on the dance floor and she got all upset because her boobs weren't staying where they're supposed to and she just threw them on the table because she was done right she liked wearing them because she felt better but they were uncomfortable right? and i don't blame her uh not not in the least so knitted knockers is another great one for those that uh, want to help out breast cancer uh, survivors, all right, along with the, the chemo blankets and the hats. So Red Scarf, how can you help me with Red Scarf? Um, so those of you that are here in Ottawa, uh, I would love it if you guys could uh, get in touch with me um, so that we can organize uh, how, to, how to go about doing this outside of just myself and my girls. Uh, we do something every year. Um, last year it was Max Keeping Foundation. Uh, my daughter held a coffee house and raise money for them. This year we're doing the Red Scarf program. Um, if you wanna help out, even though you're not in Ottawa, um, 60 inches by six inches, so six inches wide by 60 inches long. I don't remember what the, the centimeters dimensions, it's in the, the description there uh, at the website. Um, you can either start your own Red Scarf program in your town, or you can send me red scarves, or you can drop off or send me red yarn, whether it's scraps or whole skeins, it doesn't matter, right? Um, just addresses in the bottom there, send it to Happy Mail, Bigger Bells Yarning, um, or drop it off, either or, doesn't matter. You wanna give us a hand, that would be fantastic. Um, hands are always welcome when it comes to working for charity. So, there you go. This year we're doing Red Scarf program. Check out the other charity options for you. And we'll see you on Monday for Manic Monday. Bye.